Hi everyone, it's Justin. There are people who wear white all summer and people who never ever do. White feels pure, fresh, clean, relaxed on one hand, but on the other hand, you might have the impression that it can make you look washed out and pale and you don't really know why, or you're afraid of making stains, fair point, point taken, or you think that it looks just very bridal for an everyday outfit. And I agree with you, white is not the easiest color on the rainbow. However, with this video, my objective is to encourage you to actually wear what this summer by showing you how to make it work for you and how to avoid all the problems that I just mentioned. First, finding the right white. There isn't only one white. There are multiple shades of white going from creamy, beige, whites that tend towards yellow slightly, if you look closely, to glacier white, snow white, those shades that tend towards blue. For white, as for any other color, <laughs> and for black as well, there, there are multiple shades, and there are cool ones and warm ones. So the case where you have the feeling that your face looks pale when you wear white, it's typically when you are cool toned and you're wearing a warm white. That's the mistake. If your undertone is cool, you should go for a cool white so that your clothes won't make your face look pale. If you're warm, go for a warm white. If you're neutral, you can choose any white you like. If you don't know what you are or what the word undertone even means, I recommend that you watch my previous video. It's linked here and down below in the description where I explain different techniques to find out your undertone. But basically, as soon as you start wearing the right temperature of white for you, for your undertone, you will look healthy. No more issues with looking too pale or washed out. Next point, avoiding that bridal look. A bride's outfit is completely matchy-matchy from head to toe. It looks like one big coordinated white surface. And that's the thing, to avoid looking like a bride when you're actually wearing white in an everyday situation, you can just mix textures and materials. Let's say you're going for a pair of cool white jeans that are made in regular plain twill weave, aka most jeans. You can combine that with a flowy top in ajouré or lace like this. The surface is not smooth and it's not tight, so it creates a nice contrast with the bottom, which is smooth and tight. You can also choose a chunky summer knit and tuck it into the pants for a more casual look. If you mix textures and fabrics, you will get a perfectly wearable, all white summer look. Another strategy, choose accessories that have zero bridal connotation. Brides don't usually wear super colorful jewelry or mega oversized earrings. I should say, at least in my culture, let's say that it's a general rule. If you wear little white pearls and delicate jewelry, people might think bridal. But if you wear colorful wooden or raffia earrings or oversized dangle earrings, people who see you will get a totally different impression. It's the same effect if you go for summer wedges or neon colored shoes, things a bride is less likely to wear. You know what I mean? An outfit and the impression that you give to people who see you is made of the clothes plus the shoes, the accessories, the bag, etc. So if you wear all white, but with colorful accessories and everything else around it, no problem. Next point, mixing in another color. If you think at this point in the video, you know what? All white is just not for me. <laughs> That's totally fine. Feel free, for instance, to add in one color. Pastel colors are typically very easy to pair with cool white because they contain a lot of white themselves. So you can pretty much choose any pastel color and combine it with white. Same thing if you're decorating your interior and you want to pair several colors within the same room. As long as you take colors that all contain a lot of white, they will always automatically look like they belong together. With warm white, it's a bit more difficult. Here, I'd say you're looking for colors like sand, earth, mustard, copper, essentially yellows, greens, and some browns, but the yellowish ones, not the reddish ones. I think these colors are probably the easiest to pair with a warm white. Next option, add a white dominant pattern. All these summer tops that you see, typically white ones with puffy sleeves gathered at the top and here that have thin blue, light blue stripes 
or little flowers or whatever, it's exactly what they do. They break the uniformity of the all white surface while remaining predominantly white. So the overall impression that people have when they see you is still clean, fresh and summer-like. Here are examples of white dominant patterns that definitely fit the summer season, at least in my opinion. All the things that I'm showing in this video, by the way, will be listed and linked below. Don't worry. I actually think that most summer patterns that we see on the market, especially in mass market and mid-range stores, actually work really well with white bottoms. And it's not a coincidence. No white after Labor Day. If you're American, you have heard about this rule that it's not okay to wear white after Labor Day. It's a rule from the 19th century. It basically says until Labor Day, early September, if you wear your summer wardrobe, summer color palette. After that date, officially it's fall. So you store away your summer wardrobe and you start wearing the fall and winter stuff and the fall and winter colors. Here's the thing. In France, my Labor Day is on May 1st. So I am, of course, going to wear white after Labor Day, but I also don't have this rule um, that September is officially fall. I'd say it depends on the weather, mostly. You're welcome to do whatever you like. If you want to wear white all year round, be my guest. I don't think that 19th century rule are completely applicable to the 21st century, if I may say so. Thumbs up if you found these tips useful. Thank you very much. Also feel free to add in your tips in the comments below. It's interesting because what I said in this video is very Western Europe centered and I'm well aware, but in other cultures, white has a different meaning, different associations. So I'm very much looking forward to your comments. We are also very close to celebrating 600,000 subscribers on this channel. And we have already crossed 50 million video views since it started. So I wanted to thank you all so much for subscribing, for taking the time to spread the word. That means the world to me and for coming back for more, basically. I will see you soon again in a new video. Until then, have a fantastic day. Bye.